Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna show you how to plan a Disney trip. In the past, you could probably just show up at Disney and have a pretty good day, but now it is way different. It's almost like you need a degree to plan a trip. And luckily I got one. This is what I got when I graduated from Disney's College of Knowledge. So today we're going to tell you everything you need to know when you are planning your Disney trip. In today's video, we're gonna cover how to get to Orlando, tickets, your resort stay, activities, and food. Now, when you think about your Disney trip, you want to think about what you're gonna do. Do you want to go to one theme park per day? Do you want to park hop? Do you want to go to Disney Springs? Do you want to go to a water park? Do you want to do any resort days? So you want to kind of start thinking about that. Then when we plan a trip, sometimes we, um, we think, okay, let's go like the first week of September. So what we do is we get online and we look for the least expensive plane tickets. Um, now maybe you will have dates picked out and that's fine too and then you just stick to those dates. So um, just different ways to think about it when you pick your dates. Make sure you see our other video where we talk about how to use budget airlines to save lots and lots of money. There is a, a pro tip that you're not going to want to miss. Getting to Orlando, I'm assuming you're either going to drive or fly. Now, if you drive, just keep in mind that when you stay at a Disney resort, they will charge you for parking, somewhere between $15 to $25 a day. Or if you stay off-site and you drive into the park each day, you will need to pay for parking at the park, $25 a day right now. For flying, when you fly in, you will probably fly into MCO, and keep in mind, you are going to need transportation from the airport to your resort. So one way you can right now, you can do Magical Express for free, but that ends December 31st, 2021. Now that is going to change to Mirrors Connect. Same idea, but you're gonna have to pay for it and reserve it. So um, that is one option. Another option is Uber or Lyft, and there are lots of other options too. You could also fly into the airport and then rent a car from there. The next thing you probably wanna do is figure out what time of the year you wanna to go to the parks. So if you want to try to avoid the busiest times, then you do not want to try to go when school is out. So like the summertime months when the kids are out of school, uh, around Thanksgiving, obviously Christmas, New Year's, uh, spring break time, those are all times when the parks just traditionally tend to be very, very busy because kids are out of school. Uh, weather is another concern you want to think about. If you are not enjoying hot weather, you want to avoid Orlando between even May clear through September. That is a hot time of the year. We were just there recently, July, August, and it was brutal hot. So uh, keep those things in mind. Um, if you like to swim and your kiddos like to swim, then you want to think about a lot of times January, February, December, January, February aren't times you may want to go. Sometimes the weather's nice out to swim, a lot of times it is definitely too cold to do that. So keep those things in mind as well. Also with Florida, you want to keep hurricane season in mind. If I'm not mistaken, I think hurricane season runs May through September. Obviously it picks up steam as the year goes, the summer goes. So like July, August, September tend to be busy months for that. So weather could play a part in your vacation. So keep that in mind. Next, you want to think about your resort. You can either choose to stay on-site or off-site, and each ones have their own pros and cons. Um, off-site, less expensive probably, um, and I can't think of any other pros, can you? <laughs> <laughs> because we like staying on-site. Yeah. We've um, done both, and I tell you, uh, we really try to stay on Disney property any chance we can get. It's, it's, it's just a totally different experience whenever you can do that, so yes. we recommend it for sure. I mean, when you stay off-site, you feel like you leave Disney and then you come back the next day. But when you stay on-site, you feel like you are in the yeah. Disney magic yeah. the whole time. It does not matter if you stay at the Valley Resorts, clear up to the Deluxe, uh, anywhere in between. Mm -hmm. I mean, being on property is a totally different experience. So yes. do it at least once in your life. Mm -hmm. You also get the free transportation. Right now you get the transportation from the airport to the resort. But also every day when you're going to the parks, you could take the bus, the boat, the monorail, the Skyliner, and it makes it so much easier. You also have um, access to the parks early before anybody else with the early entry and the dining plan. Currently they don't have it, but they are bringing it back and only Disney Resort guests have access to the dining plan. So if that interests you, then that is another 
perk of staying at the Disney Resorts. Now, we are going to do another video after this about how to choose your Disney Resort. There are so many of them, so make sure you watch that video too. Let's go. Now, you're certainly gonna want some tickets to get into the parks, so you wanna try to figure out Am I going to go just for one day? Am I only going to do one park a day? Am I going to park hop, which currently is only available after 2 p.m.? Yep. And then you want to worry about food. Now, one thing you can do is order groceries. We did a video on how to use Amazon Prime to order groceries, so make sure you check that out. But um, that can save you money, especially for breakfast. It's so easy just to, to have food in your resort for breakfast. You could even use it for lunches and pack your lunch, take it to the parks. Yes, that's mm -hmm. Yep, now um, when you're there, you can do quick service, so you might wanna pick out ahead of time where you wanna eat. If you want to do table service, you are going to want to make reservations early, advanced dining reservations, ADRs they are called. And we have a video on how to make those using the app, so check that out too. Also, what I do before each trip is I start a note on my phone about all the snacks and food that I want to try when I'm there. So, like, let's say we're at Hollywood Studios and I need a snack, but we don't know what, we can't think of anything. I just get out my phone and check out the notes, and um, it gives me some ideas of things that I've been wanting to try. It's very helpful, actually. Mm -hmm. You're also going to think about having magic bands. Now, as you know, they're not complimentary anymore. So you can still buy them online. You can still buy them in the parks. You can use an old one if you still have it. You can actually go with the My Disney Experience app. That's a good option as well. Or get a key to the world card, which by the way are available at the front desk of the resort that you're staying at, or just use an Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. You also want to think about the activities that you want to do when you are there. They have lots of tours that you can take. The VIP tour is really cool. We did an elephant tour when we went to Animal Kingdom. We loved that. Um, there are Segway tours that we want to try. Um, they have mini golf there. You want to think about, do you want to go to Disney Springs? Do you want to just plan a resort day? Also, if you are going in the fall or winter, you might want to go to the Halloween party or the Christmas party. So you will have to plan that ahead of time. A really cool thing you might want to think about doing is making special notes of special activities that you want to do while you're in the parks or at the resorts. I can think of like at Magic Kingdom, that zoom in photo uh, pass opportunity. Or there's a cool one at uh, Hollywood Studios. It's like a 360 uh, photo pass opportunity. If you want to have a picture taken with any characters, special characters you want to see, those kinds of things, keep in mind. And also when you're at your resorts, they have like uh, movies under the stars and different activities you can do. So just make a special note of those kind of things so you don't miss out on them if you get the chance. For our longer trips, Sharon actually prints out a schedule that looks like this one right here. She even calls it our Disney Park schedule. As you can see, she lists out the days we're gonna be there, the dates we're gonna be there, uh, the parks we're gonna visit each day, the park hours, and then special notes on what we're gonna do. We're gonna rope drop, then we're gonna go to Smuggler's Run, then we're gonna have a snack, the French toast pretzel, and then, uh, you know, where we're gonna be, what we're gonna do, and then at two o'clock, obviously we're gonna park hop, where we're gonna go next, how we're gonna get there, the hours for the next park, then all the activities we wanna do for the next park, how we're gonna get home. So this is a really cool, detailed schedule of everything that we want to try to accomplish and how we're going to accomplish it. If you think that is a neat idea, make sure you hit the like button so more people can see it. Okay, so we've talked about how to get to Orlando. We've talked about the tickets. We've talked about the resorts. We've talked about special activities. Now, after all that, you're gonna to wanna to start thinking about packing. There are a lot of things that you can take on your trip to make it better. So make sure you see our video that we made about, um, what was it called? A hundred things to pack for Disney or something like that. We had so many ideas of what you could pack for Disney. Also, if you are going to be wearing group shirts or if you want to wear special outfits to different parks, make sure you start working on that early so they are all ready to go. You definitely want to make sure you have downloaded and know how to use the My Disney Experience app. We actually just uploaded some videos, basic stuff about how to use it for dining reservations, how to uh, find wait times, navigate with the, the maps and stuff like that. So make sure you check those out. But it's definitely something you want to have downloaded and ready to go. Makes your experience a lot better. Also, there's an app out there to count down to Disney. This is the one that we use. 
but it's just really cool. You can open it up and it just gives you your Disney countdown so you know how many days you have left to get there and have one. Now, when you're planning your trip, you can do it all by yourself. You have to know a lot, but you can do it. You could also use a travel agent. Now, we were never big on travel agents before just because we didn't understand. Like, I thought they cost more, but travel agents are usually free. I used to be a travel agent, and the people I worked with did not pay me. I got my commission from Disney. So keep in mind, it is free. And they are so helpful. They can plan your whole trip for you. They can book your resorts. They can get your tickets. If there are any issues leading up to your trip or during your trip, they can help you with them. Let's say you, um, you book your trip and then Disney has a special offer. They can rebook your trip and save you that money. They can make your dining reservations for you. They can help you at least. Um, and Disney's coming out with so many new things like the, the Disney Genie, um, early theme park entry. They're going to be able to help you with all of that stuff. So just keep in mind that that is an option to use a travel agent. Hopefully this video helped you out a lot. And hopefully you are planning your next Disney trip. I know we are planning our next three. Yeah.